have you ever just had a struggle in your life? You really want something and you're struggling and you're struggling and just seems like you're not making any progress. Man, I wanted one of those pickles. It's a good thing we're talking about struggle in today's Crazy Bless Show. Welcome to the Crazy Bless Show. This is where we learn how to live by the word of God so that we can get results that are blessed like crazy. I'm talking about off the charts crazy because that's how we're supposed to live. Now, just a heads up, you might be hearing a little bit of a hammers, some, uh, some building work going on, maybe some saws. That's all good, baby. It's called renovation. That's what we're doing here at the Crazy Blessed headquarters. And guess what? That's also what we're doing here in your life. We're learning what to do in the struggle. And sometimes it does sound like our lives are getting renovated. Anyone ever been through a renovation? Oh my gosh, it's so tough. It's like nothing seems to be in order. Everything's out of place. You don't know what you're gonna wake up to. Sometimes when our lives are in a renovation period, it feels the same way, like a constant struggle. You don't know what you're gonna wake up to. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're in a struggle, you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? So what do we do in the struggle? Well, this is actually a two-parter. In today's Crazy Blessed Show, we're gonna learn about one of the purposes of struggles. There's actually two purposes of struggle. One purpose of struggle is to perfect us. Ew. <laughs> no one likes to be perfected. That sounds like refinement. And yes, it is. Why do we renovate anything? Because it's being perfected, it's being refined, it's being made better. So understand that sometimes the struggle in your life, not all the time, we're gonna talk about that in our next Crazy Bless show, but sometimes the struggles in our life is to refine us, is to perfect us, it is to make us better. That's our lives. We are supposed to be in a, in a process of refinement of development, of growth. I'm telling you, you are either growing or dying. And neither one feels great, right? But we always like the results that we get when we're growing. So we're gonna learn basically these um, one law and three places to put this law so that that perfecting process can be done can be done well and can be done rapidly because I don't want you and I know you don't want you to spend your life in a struggle. No one wants to stay in a struggle. So what are we going to do about that? Well, first of all, understand that love is the perfecting force. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to just make this so clear and plain. I hope you're buckled up. You know what you have to wear to the Crazy Bless Show, right? We do have like a wardrobe requirement here on the Crazy Bless Show, you have to wear steel toe boots and big kid pants. If you ain't wearing the steel toe boots and the big kid pants, there's a likelihood that you're coming here naked <laughs> and you do not want to be exposed. <laughs> so get ready. We go deep. We learn this stuff. We apply this stuff and our lives are radically transformed and made into that crazy blessing, right? So the first thing is we have to understand love is the perfecting force. And this is usually where we get off track. A lot of times when we're in a struggle, something we did something or we thought something or we went down a path that created that struggle. Now, not all the time. We're gonna learn about another purpose of struggle in the next episode. But sometimes we go down a path that is not always gonna be the best one for us. So struggle happens as a way to perfect us and bring us back to that place where God can truly bless us. So check this out. I'm going to read to you. This is 1 John 4, 17 through 19. I hope you're taking notes. Uh, do that because it really helps get these processes. If you can't, I get it. I don't want you to drive and listen and take notes. That would be detrimental. <laughs> so let's not do that. But this is 1 John 4, 17 through 19. And check this out. I'm reading from the classic Amplified Bible. In this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with, with us. See that per perfection? So love, 
this, this union with God that shows up as love because God is love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us so that we may have the confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is, so are we in this world. Can you just stop what you're doing and say that out loud? As he is, so am I in this world. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. As he is, so am I in this world. That should set you on fire, baby. As God is, as Jesus is right now, perfected, so am I in this world. So what does this mean? How is this love perfected? This way, this is verse 18. There is no fear in love. Dread doesn't even exist, but full grown, complete, perfect love, perfect love turns fear out of doors, expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. Ew. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. We love him because he first loved us. Do you see this perfecting process is all based in love? Well, what does love have anything to do with it, Hannah? I'm struggling. I'm struggling in my marriage. I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna sleep in the same bed. What, is, what does love have to do with it, with this struggle? Because I, I'm seeing a mound of bills that I can't pay. What does love have to do with this disease I'm diagnosed with that I wake up to every day? I feel the symptoms every day. What does love have to do with that struggle? I'm going to show you, sweet friend. I'm going to show you, baby cakes. It's going to get real. So listen to this, Matthew 22, 40. And this is what we're going to base all this, this episode on. Ready? These two commandments. It is, it is loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and loving others as yourself. Did you get that? Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love others as yourself. And upon these two commandments, this is Matthew twenty-two forty. upon these two commandments, loving God, loving others, this sums up and upon them depend all the law and the prophets. So the first question we have to ask ourselves, if, am I operating in love toward others? It says, love others as you love yourself. Am I operating in love toward others? So here is the, you want to know the easiest way to stay in a struggle? Easiest way to stay in a struggle. You ready for this? Is to hold unforgiveness. Easiest way to stay in a struggle. Hold unforgiveness. Well, I just can't, I just can't let it go, Hannah. I just, you don't know what that person did to me. They... I've been wronged. You don't know the trauma I've gone through. You don't, you don't understand the abuse I've experienced. God does. And he's saying, until you let that go and operate in love, you will stay in a struggle. It'll be a mental struggle. It'll be a physical struggle. It will be a spiritual struggle. It will be a struggle, period, until you decide to let it go and operate in love. Now, what does this mean? How do we do this? Check this out. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It says, faith, hope, love abides. Faith is a conviction and the belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. Hope is a joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. And love is the true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for us and in us. Remember, because God first loved us, now we can love others. These three, faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is what? Come on, shout it out loud. Love, that is the greatest. You have faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love. So we have to understand that if we hold unforgiveness toward others, it will 100% of the time keep us in a struggle. And you're like, I'm not ready to forgive. Then you're not ready to succeed. Then you're not ready to grow. Then you're not ready to prosper. Then you're not ready to be blessed. You are saying no to all of those things because you're saying yes to unforgiveness. Well, how do I forgive that? You forgive. Forgiveness is not a suggestion from God. Forgiveness is a command. So when we push away that command, it means we are choosing to operate and live in sin because we won't forgive. But it's so hard, Hannah. I want to I make this a lot simpler for you, okay? When you forgive someone, you don't have to feel like it. 
Now I want, I just want to, I just want that to like rest in your spirit for a minute. When you forgive someone, you don't have to feel like it. Well, why do I still feel like, like, like irritated when I see them? Why do I still feel angry? Why do I still feel threatened when I hear their name? Because forgiveness is not a feeling. Hold that. Forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is an intentional act. That means when we hold that person, that situation, even forgiveness toward ourselves, that, that situation, we say, you know what? Today, like name the date today, whatever the date is, today, I forgive that person. In the name of Jesus, I forgive that person. I love them. I bless them. I release them. It happened today and I have the, I write it down. I, I have the evidence. I did it this day. Write it down. Now, here's what we do after that. When the feeling comes up of frustration, anxiety, anger, resentment, when that starts to surface, here's the typical thing that the enemy can put in your mind. You didn't really forgive them. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You did. But when the feeling comes up, all you have to do is hold that feeling and say, oh no, wait a minute. I forgave them. I forgave them and I love them. You have to convince yourself of the truth so you can walk your feelings into that place. So the thing that is keeping you in struggle could be not, not operating in love and holding on forgiveness. Today is the day that we say that's done. I told you there'd be sounds of renovation. <laughs> I believe it's happening in your life too, baby. I can hear it. I can hear the wheels turning. I can hear the hammers. I can hear the saws. Things are changing in your life because God is building up an empire in you. He is building up your dream in you. And he's saying you need to forgive. Forgive and let it go. And that's the first thing is we have to operate in love toward others. Now, the second one. Am I operating in love toward God? Because that love needs to be perfected in us. Am I operating in love toward God? And how do we know this? We can say we love God, but we can also love God and not trust him. Now hold up. You know, I'm speaking truth here on the Crazy Blessed Show. We can say we love God and not trust him. But love, true love equals trust. I'm going to show this to you. In Matthew 6, it says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, which are deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. It says you, you can't love money or whatever is trusted in. Where are you putting your trust? What holds the solution to your problem? That's what you're trusting in. And a lot of people today are trusting in money. This will solve my problem. If I just had more money, it will solve my problems. That's why the Bible here, that's why Matthew chooses to use money because he was so familiar with money. And he said, you know what? I see it all the time. People trust in money. They say they love God, but they don't trust God. They trust money. They got their sources confused. So we have to understand who is my source. The next verse says, therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life, whether you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body or what you'll put on or is life not greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing said, Hannah, I'm not worried about buying new clothes. I'm just worried about paying my electricity bill. Yeah, the same thing. You're trusting in money to supply your needs and your wants and not God. Because sometimes we hold this idea that if I give God total authority and if he is my one-stop shop, then I'm going to have to live um, deprived. I'm going to have to live without the awesome things that I love. I'm going to have to like go be a missionary in Africa and wash feet. And I'm telling you, if God calls you to be a missionary and wash feet, that is where your joy is, baby. And nothing will fulfill outside of that. So, but we have this idea that he's going to make me suffer. If I really give God total authority in my life, then I'm going to suffer for it. That is again, another lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie from Satan because God wants to give you all good things. And a heavenly father knows how to give the greatest gifts to his children. So we have to understand how this works. 
I need to get very clear on who my source is or what my source is. Now, further down, that was verse 24 and 25. Further down in verse 33, it says, but seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together shall be given to you besides. Another, another version says, will be added unto you. So we have to get this idea really planted down deep in our heart. If my source is God, then I can trust it. I can trust God because I trust in the love. Do you see how the love is the perfecting force? If I truly understand the love God has for me, he, he who did not spare even his own son, but freely gave him up for us all, will he not give us all things? He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you physically. He wants to bless you emotionally. He wants to bless you relationally. He wants to bless you financially. He wants to bless you in every area of your life. But if we have this warped perception of God that he's out to bop us on the head and punish us, then we're not allowing the love to flow. We have tainted the truth and the identity of God. We have made him the criminal and the enemy does that very in very crafty and cunning ways. He does that. But we, we really understand, man, God loves me so much. He loves me so much and I can trust the love because God is love. So I'm not, I'm not trusting, oh, can I pay my bills? I'm trusting that God loves me so much that he will give me more than enough to cover it. And that's where we have to get very clear on where are we putting our faith? Where are we putting our trust? If we understand that God is love, we can trust him. He becomes our source. When there is a problem in our life, and we're talking about struggle today. If there is a struggle, I know he is my source. He knows the answer. He knows the solution. He knows how to get me out of it. If I am without, he knows how to provide. He, ha he is all sufficient. And now I'm going to trust the love. I'm going to move in that direction. And God is going to be my source. Here's the deal. It says we can't serve God and money. That means one will be our God. Either money will be our God or God will be our God. Now, when God is our God, we worship God and first, he is first, his kingdom is first, and then all these other things are added. But if money is our God, then that's our source because our God is our source. So if God is our source, all good things come from him. I am well supplied. I am sufficiently cared for. If money is our source, then money also becomes our God because now money will supply, money will make sure everything's okay, money will be, give me everything I need. So do you see how the two cannot sit at the same table? Someone's going to come crash into the floor. You get to decide. But that absence of love means we don't really understand the love of God. We're putting our trust in money and not God. And that will 100% of the time leave us in a struggle. A lot of times people are struggling today because money is their source. Money is not your source. Money is a resource. I want you to get that friend. Money is a resource. God is our source and God can give through money and fill our life, but, but it doesn't come from money. It comes from God through money. Money is the resource that God uses. So trust, let's just go to the source. Have you ever heard that, that thing like when there's a problem or you're trying to make a deal or you're just like, I just wanna go straight to the source. What's the source? What, what is the alpha and omega? What is the beginning and the end? Where does, where, who signs the checks? That's what I wanna know. That's the source. Go straight to the source, my friend, and that's gonna be God and then be able to let love do its perfecting work in you. And I promise you that struggle, <clears throat> that struggle will stop. Now there's one more thing. We have to understand that this idea of God and money and the waffling back and forth, this leads to a double mind. Now, a lot of times, um, you know, we talk about the double-minded man, right? Or the double-minded mom. <laughs> I, talk, I like to talk about that a lot. But when we go back and forth between God is my source, but money is my source. 
it leads to us being double minded. Check this out. It says only it must be in faith. This is in James, James chapter one. Only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let us not, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is, a man of two minds, remember God and money, a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute. He is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks and feels and decides. This is that waffling. Make a decision today. God is my source. God is who I go to. And I'm going to, I understand, I may need money. I feel like I need money. I don't want to like gloss over that because that's a very real need. But as long as you need money, you will chase money. But when you are devoted to God as your source, I'm going to tell you something. The money will chase you. And the struggle is over. But there's one more thing. We have to talk about one more thing, and that's loving ourselves. Because remember, it said, you have to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Upon those two laws. Well, love your neighbor as yourself actually implies you need to love yourself too. If you're not loving yourself, you will stay in the struggle. What does that look like? Here, it looks like Romans 5, 19 through 21. Check it out. But just as one man's disobedience, fall, failing to hear, heedlessness, and carelessness, many were constituted sinners. So it's saying because of Adam... And he said, now all these people, you know, coming from Adam are sinners. We fall under the curse. So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God and brought into right standing with him. So one man's disobedience, Adam, led to sin. And then one man's obedience, which is Jesus, led now to grace, which covers up the sin. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to live under the curse anymore. We don't have to live as slaves to the law. We can step into this, this place of grace and freedom. It says in verse 20, but then law came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and, and exciting opposition. But where sin increased and abounded, grace, God's unmerited favor, has surpassed it and increased the more and super abounded. So it's saying where sin abounds, grace super abounds. I like that word. Super abound. Let's all super abound today. Let's just decide to do that right here on the Crazy Blessed Show. We're going to super abound. So that just as sin has reigned in death, verse 21, so grace, his unearned and undeserved favor, might reign also through righteousness, right standing with God, which issues in eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, our Lord. So let me make, the, let me break this down for you. We are all sinners, right? We have all sinned. But... That's not where we stay. That's just where we come to Jesus. Yes, sinner, saved by grace. Jesus now has transformed us. We are a new being. But if we don't understand our identity and love this identity and love the gift of grace in our life, then we will still, even though we are a new creature saved by grace, we will still be in bondage to sin because we are not operating in the love of our new identity. I am a new creation. I don't, I did sin. I don't have to anymore. But now we think, oh my gosh, now I can't sin. <gasps> now I can't sin. If I sin, I fall out of grace. No, you don't. That's not falling out of grace. I'll tell you what falling out of grace is in our, in our next episode. But understand you can't like, you can't fall out of grace. Not sin doesn't put you out of grace, not staying in grace and believing that Jesus is a finished work. That's what makes you fall into sin because now you're trying to fix it. Man is trying to fix the problem instead of allowing God through Jesus to now operate in that finished work. You're not supposed to be able to overcome sin. That's what Jesus did. If you could live a sinless life, if you could just go without sin. And you're like, Hannah, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I can go without sin. I can be really religious and I can say the right things and I can, and I can be loving to people and, and I, and I don't, and I don't cuss and I don't, and I don't do that. Like all the things, right? Honey, you're, you're going to be screwing up 
eventually because if you are so much, I can't sin, I can't sin, I got to protect myself, then you live such a small life. Like let's say you stayed inside all day, you didn't watch a single thing on TV, you didn't hear a four letter word, you didn't, you didn't do anything wrong. But now you're not out in the world being salt and light and, and that is a sin of omission. So it's like you can't avoid this. Okay, Hannah, so you're saying I can't avoid sin, so I may as well just sin. No, I'm saying man and man's power and your mortal power, you cannot overcome sin. But through this relationship we have to God through Jesus, now we live in the finished work. We live in the super abounding grace. So now we don't even desire to sin. So understand this struggle could be, I am not dealing with the thing that I know I need to deal with. You are tolerating sin and resisting the grace. Check this out. Hebrews 12, one, we're going to wrap this up. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance and unnecessary weight and that sin, which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. That will keep you in a struggle. That sin will keep you in a struggle. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. So we have that option. We don't have to live with the sin and we can quit tolerating it. Oh, I'm going to get this under control. I'm going to stop binging on this food. I'm going to stop cussing people out. I'm going to stop watching porn on, on TV. I'm going to stop um, I'm talking bad about people. I'm going to stop gossiping. I'm going to stop. stop. Live so enraptured by the love of Jesus and say, and get to that point where like, you know what? I can't, but you can. So now I receive all power and all authority to operate as an overcomer of this sin. That is operating in the love towards yourself, not tolerating it. It's like, no, I'm not going to tolerate this sin anymore. This is not okay. This is not okay how I'm managing my money. This is not okay how I'm, how I'm taking care of my body. This is not okay the things I'm thinking on. This is not okay the things I'm looking at. This is not okay the things I'm participating in. It's not okay. I'm not going to tolerate it anymore because sin will keep you in struggle. So release it. Say, you know, I'm, I'm just going to face it head on. It's not okay. But God, you love me. Even in this state, you love me. So Jesus, I receive all power. Receive it today. And friend, when you are operating in love, that love to God, that love for others, that love for yourself, the struggle is going to stop. And guess what? You're going to be blessed like crazy. Ah, oh, doesn't that feel good when you can actually get past the struggle and finally dig into the goodness of God? I got your friend. Be blessed like crazy. Mm. That's a good pickle.